Hello there and welcome back to my workshop. This is Chest of Drawers show number seven. If you're just joining us in the series, uh, this is what we're making. It's a small chest of drawers for storage in my workshop and we've got the carcass completed. Uh, while you were away, I put the drawer guides in here. That was the last thing I needed to do. So now it's time to move on and start making the drawers. Now the drawers and the top are going to be figured maple. So the first order of the day was to find a nice piece of figured tiger maple. And here it is. Look at this thing. Gorgeous. It's four quarter thick. It's 12 and a quarter inches wide. Very little cup to this board. It's heavily figured. And this is one half of an entire 10 foot long board that I purchased. We went down to a place called Hearn Hardwoods in Oxford, PA. We were going down to the Chesapeake Bay to spend the weekend, and I thought we'd just kind of swing by and see what they had. And before I knew it, I had purchased a 10-foot long board, and we managed to cram it into our hatchback Honda, and it was our uh, traveling companion for the weekend. But uh, should have seen us dragging this thing through the hotel lobby. But uh, only another woodworker would understand, so I think you probably do. Uh, anyway, it's a beautiful piece of figured maple, tiger maple. Tough to see here, but you'll see in a moment an example of what it looks like. This I'm going to use for the top. Two pieces here uh, out of this part, and then I'll have some additional pieces left over for my stash of hardwoods. And then I've already milled to three-quarter inch using power tools three boards that I need for the drawer fronts. So you can see how that goes. Beautiful stuff here. Look at that. And this is going to be the top three drawers. This will be the two middle drawers. And this is going to be the bottom drawer. So neat stuff. I'm really glad that we found this. Now I'm going to be taking it the rest of the way with my hand tools and planing it. And as you probably know, planing figured maple is a little tricky. It tears out. And I've had very good luck with just my regular bench planes. I get a, a, sh a good sharp iron, set it for a thin shaving, and it works pretty well. But I thought since I was going to be doing a lot of this on this project, I'd see if I could get something maybe a little bit better and step it up a notch. And this is what I came up with. Here's my regular old Stanley number five. This is the blade or iron that originally came with it. And I replaced it with a hawk replacement iron. That's this right here. And the Hawk irons are just a little bit thicker than the original Stanley's. And a lot of the newer replacement irons they're making these days are much thicker. And the problem with them is that they are too big to fit in the mouth and they have to file the mouth. They have to tweak the frog and they've got to slide it back and create room and open up the mouth. And it's a little bit of a hassle. And I really wanted to avoid that. So I found that with this Hawk replacement blade, all I had to do was pull this out and pop this in. The only adjustment I really needed to make was to adjust the lever cap, but it fit right in there. And my frog is coplanar with the mouth. All of the frogs on my bench planes are coplanar. I don't mess with them at all, even though I realize that there's some advantages to tightening the mouth and moving the frog from time to time. I've never done it and I've always had good results, so I'm sticking with it. But what makes this especially useful for figured woods is that it has a back bevel on it. I put a back bevel on the other side of the blade. I should show you this again here. Here's the, here's the plane iron. And what I did with the hawk is I put a 13 degree back bevel along the flat side. So I've got two bevels, the main bevel here and a 13 degree bevel there. So the plane iron usually has an angle of attack of 45 degrees on this plane, but with the back bevel it increases to 58 degrees. And that is a much higher angle and that is much better for reducing tear out. So kind of neat and I thought you'd like to see it. So what I'm going to do now is clear the deck here and uh, we're going to plane a sample piece. So I got to move this thing quickly. That 
is one heavy board. And here is a sample piece here. Let's give it a try here. That works pretty good, I'd say. Now let's try it the other way. I'm going to reverse the direction pretty well, I'd say, in both directions. And that's how nice it looks. Mm -hmm. So let me test the edge as well, because I'm going to be doing a, doing a lot of planing of the edge. Let's see what happens there. pretty good. Mm. Getting out of breath here. <laughs> okay. All right. I know that works. So, I think that's going to be really useful as I make these drawers. The other nice thing about this is that, let me show you here, here's my number four plane. This same iron fits in my number four. So you can see the number four is four inches shorter than my number five. I can use the same plane, for, same iron for either plane. And that is pretty neat because for smoothing purposes, I can use this plane and for other purposes, I can use this one. So for the cost of one replacement iron and the trouble of putting one small bevel on the back, I've increased the capability of both of the probably the most useful planes in my shop. So I think that's pretty neat. Now we're going to take a break and I'm going to prep some of the parts that I need for these three top drawers. That's going to be the sides and the back. And then we'll come back and uh, we're going to make one of these drawers. So, see you in a bit. We're going to call that last section, How to Tame Your Tiger. <laughs> okay. I've got uh, the parts for my drawer, first drawer, cut to length and plain to width. Uh, I've got my cabinet maker's triangles drawn on here so I don't get my parts mixed up. I'm using quarter sawn stock like that. And typically I would saw my boards to width, but in this case I used my scrub plane because I only had to remove about a quarter of an inch of material. So let me show you very quickly how I did that. This is a scrub plane of sorts. It's actually a number four, but what I put in here was a heavily cambered iron, and that's set up to take a thick shaving. So we'll just uh, plane that on down. I need my glasses here. There's my line.
I'll take it the rest of the way with my number seven. Could use my number five, but I've got that set up for the tiger maple. Okay, I'll take that the rest of the way later, but you get the idea. So, another use for my scrub what? Another use for my scrub plane. Now, let's have a look at the kind of drawer we're making here. This is a drawer from my sawtill. I made that a couple years ago. And there's a link to the sawtill show where you see me make this drawer. But uh, the drawers we're making this time are going to be the same way. Very typical. Uh, got half blind dovetails in the front. I got through dovetails in the back. It's a small drawer, so I have a little quarter inch bottom on it here. And the only thing unusual about it is that I end with a half tail down here. Typically with joinery like this, you end with a half pin, like this one up here. You'd have the same thing down here. But I end with a half tail because it allows me to plow my groove lower and closer to the bottom edge of this board. And for quarter inch stock that I'm using for my bottom, that works out really well. Not necessary when you're using half inch stock, but for the small drawers, yes. So you'll sometimes see this in antiques uh, using that, that method there. So, okay, I think the first thing we need to do is to uh, scribe our gauge lines for all of our parts. So let's get started there. I've got three marking gauges set and ready to go for what I'm doing. This is set uh, 3 16 of an inch less than the thickness of the front of my drawer. There. Okay. Now I will need the same setting for the ends of the sides of my drawers that will be joining with the with the front. Okay, then I need to uh, use a second marking gauge, and this will be for the depth of my sides. And this is set slightly less than the thickness of my sides because I want my sides to be slightly proud of the uh, front and back. Okay, got those, and I need the same marks on the back of my drawer. And then, finally, I need this third marker, third marking gauge, to uh, set the through dovetails on the back ends of my sides. Is anybody still with me? <laughs> Okay, everything is marked. Now, if you only have two marking gauges, I'm just giving you a really good reason to go out and buy a third. <laughs> so uh, you're welcome, what are friends for? Okay, now what? Let's see, 
Um, I think the next thing we're going to do is cut grooves into the uh, inside bottom edges of my sides and that will be for the bottom. That's what the bottom will ride on. So we're going to do that. Let's get set up for that. See here. Spacer. And we're ready to go. Now I'm going against the grain here, no way to avoid that, and I'm hoping that's not going to give me too much trouble, but we'll see very shortly. Not bad, okay. Okay, I've got my sides clamped together in the vise, and if any of this is starting to look vaguely familiar to you, it's because I've done all these steps when I made the drawers for my saw till. So I've provided some links below. You can check them out and see me doing this in those shows and uh, using these very same methods. So we're going to move along at a fairly quick pace here, and uh, let's get started. I've got my dividers ready to go. Here we go. And uh, my dovetail marker. Hard to see my own lines. Here we go. Can you see? And then you have to move over here. Got it? Always important that you uh, don't saw where you don't want to saw. Okay, there we go. Ready to go.
And with a little pairing, we're ready to fit this drawer together. Actually, not much pairing at all. I did pretty well. Now the tiger maple is a little bit tricky to pair. The grain has a mind all of its own, but I took my time and it worked out pretty well. So let's put this together. There we go. Looks pretty good. Now the back here, I still have to cut this piece off. And that's so the bottom of the drawer can fit into the groove. But uh, we'll do that on the next show. We're going to glue this up and plane the sides and do all that fitting next time. Uh, we had a little bit of a delay getting to this point. And uh, while we were waiting to find time to shoot this, I made another drawer. And here it is. And this one is glued together. And uh, it has been plain flush. And the back, can you see it there? Mm -hmm. The back is cut the way it's supposed to be. And uh, I will explain next time about these mystery dados. Sorry to leave you with a teaser, but uh, I'll explain what they're for next time we get here. And uh, let's fit it into its space here. Goes pretty nicely, a little snug right here, but that's how I like it at this point. I'll fine tune it at the very end. So, we're uh, coming along. Uh, when we get back, uh, we'll be working on these drawers at some point and we'll pick it up from there. And uh, that's uh, about it. So, thanks for stopping by and see you next time. Right. We're going to call that last section, How to Tame Your Tiger Without <laughs> Tweaking Your Frog. Okay. <laughs> I just thought of that. Is that a no? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's try it again. <laughs> Can we stop tape? <laughs>